Let's see. My name's Chris Dias. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. I'm very lucky to be accompanied by Matt Hernandez today. Uh, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about microservices and serverless uh, with Azure. And the longest title ever, microservices and serverless with Azure and Visual Studio Code. Matt, say Hi. hello. <laughs> OK. So um, it's late. Thank you for coming to what I'm now calling the dinner theater time of the evening. Uh, because it's late and there's been a few cocktails consumed, we're going to sort of make things pretty easy. Uh, and we're just going to dig in and have some fun demos and showing you how to build and deploy and debug uh, serverless and microservice applications uh, in Azure. So um, let's move forward here. Uh, now, VS Code has a ton of great extensions for uh, Azure, but instead of reading them off a slide, can I jump in over here, Matt? Instead of reading these off a slide, let's jump over to VS Code and sort of take a look over there. Hopefully, everybody can see it. It's big enough. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the extensions view. It. If you just type in Azure, and it'll do a query of the marketplace, and you can see there's a whole ton of great extensions out there, something for functions, ARM templates, app service, IoT Edge, if you're doing anything like that, CLI experience. Um, and one thing you'll notice when you click on these, and of course, you get the full uh, description of them. One thing you'll notice uh, about using these extensions, they all sort of rely on this one extension called the Azure Account Extension. And so the Azure Account Extension lets me have a single sign-in for, for Azure. It also lets me manage my subscriptions, just like in the portal. So if I click on Matt's name down in the status bar, you can see all the different subscriptions that Matt has access to. And I can filter them and say, yeah, I want them all, or I don't want any, I just want demos. And I click on OK, and that will update uh, itself. Uh, the extensions will update themselves based on those selections. Now, another cool thing that the uh, Azure CLI extension does for me is it gives me access to uh, the cloud shells. Everybody heard of the cloud shell in Azure? All right, well, you can actually do a cloud shell inside VS Code using the, uh, the extension. And then now we've requested a cloud shell. You can see I'm logged in as Matt on, uh, on Azure, and I can say AZ. You know, version, and it'll show me the Azure command line, but I'm actually running up in the cloud, and that terminal is being piped down locally uh, inside VS Code. But what that means is, like, if I'm a big CLI guy, and if I want to do all of my work sort of using the command line, we can use the Azure CLI extension. I come in here, and I can just type in AZ, press space, and I get a full, rich IntelliSense experience against the Azure CLI for creating and manipulating uh, objects uh, in Azure. So I can do something like Azure account, uh, list, uh, the output, I want it to be you know, a table. And if I press Control tick, what that'll do is it'll actually send it to the open terminal. You see it actually sent it to the terminal which is connected to the cloud. And it ran it there. So I can have this sort of nice connected experience uh, using the Azure CLI uh, extension as well as the Azure account extension. Now, this is pretty cool. CLIs are cool. It's a base extension that everyone is going to go and use. Um, but CLIs can get a little boring because there's been some, you've got beer, beer's good. Yeah, we don't have beer. Uh, but nobody wants to see a demo on Azure CLI. So I think what we should do is uh, flip back over to the slides. We go to slide one, right over there. And Matt, push the button. let's push there the button. Go. Matt, tell right. us about microservices. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, I'd love to. So um, this first demo, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the journey from uh, the single Louder. server web app that's kind of spread across this sharing resources on that machine and bringing that into like a containerized environment where you can start to, uh, to, to adopt those uh, microservices. And what I'm going to do is a uh, demo machine. I'm going to show that using the Docker extension for VS Code. Let me see. So what I have here is a, uh, just a basic Node app. It's uh, built on Express. It's talking to Mongo for the back end. It's got Angular on the front end. Very, very simple. And we are going to start by adding Docker files. So if you're not familiar with Docker, that's totally cool. That's kind of the point of the extension. So this is going to help you get to uh, the point where you have an image and you're ready to deploy this and start containerizing or start breaking into microservices. So uh, out of the box, we support a handful of different languages. Uh, we're going to choose Node. And I'm on port 8080. And you'll see some green files that show up now. The important one, of course, is our Docker file. Uh, we're just going to end up with the Alpine node image, uh, listening on the port that I specified. But you also get the same IntelliSense that you would expect in VS Code, thanks to the extension. We're not going to worry about that right now. But we are going to build this image. So we have app. We have our configuration file. 
Let's build it. I'm going to give it the default name. It's going to be the workspace. It's going to tag it latest. And important thing to note here is that it's actually going to execute the commands in the Docker CLI. So again, if you're not familiar with Docker, you can see the commands that are, that are being output that's executing all of this. And you can start to learn as you, as you uh, start to learn. I'll wait for this to run here. Let me switch over to the Docker extension and show you what that looks like. So I've actually already built this. So I'm surprised it took as long as it did considering I just built it. But uh, here's the image that is built for this app. Uh, from here, we can, we can run it. And we'll switch over to browser. It's already running, but I'll refresh that page. So there you go. Again, it's super basic app. Uh, we went from app running locally on machine to uh, container running on my machine. But we want to do a little bit more. So we will tag it real quick. Uh, so this is going to specify my Azure Container Registry endpoint as part of the tag so that I can push this and it'll automatically get picked up uh, by the Docker CLI and know which registry to push this to. There it is. We'll push. Let's so that. Matt, the Docker CLI knows based on the name or the tag of the image where to send it to. That's correct. All right. That makes and sense. Sorry about that. Oh, that was my fault. <laughs> That's OK. Sorry. That's okay. So here's my container registry. Uh, it's still pushing, but it is already out here. There we go. So here is the latest tag that we pushed uh, out on my registry. And I can deploy this to Azure directly from VS Code. So we'll choose my demo subscription. I have a couple of. Uh, things I can use here. So uh, first is resource group. This is just a logical grouping of resources in App Service, or in Azure, rather. Uh, this is just to help you keep things organized. Next will be your plan. This is the infrastructure that backs this particular web app. We'll give it a name. So what kind of machine is that? Uh, this is a Linux machine. So all right. It, yeah, all of these, all these experiences are going to target Linux. There we go. So. Now we are provisioning the resource if we need to. In this case, I chose uh, things that already existed. We are creating the web app, setting the settings required to pull from the right registry. Uh, that includes auth and everything like that. And it's up and running. I'll click that. It'll take a minute for it to do a pull from the registry, start up the container. And while it's doing that, let me show you what just happened here. So this is another one of the extensions, the uh, App Service extension. This is uh, this so will like Matt. Can I interrupt? Yeah. This uh, Azure icon on the left. That's new. Oh yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, so the the uh, <laughs> the extensions themselves are starting to contribute to this view. What we found was it got real busy here when we had a bunch of these. So I'm trying to break them out and keep them focused. I'm glad that you asked that. Excellent. I like this new Docker one too. Uh, so here is our our uh, web app that was just created as part of this. And of course, here are the settings I was talking about. So you see the authentication to pull from the registry and all of that. And here is the app. It is out running on Azure. And that was, what, like five minutes to go from app on my machine to container to registry to running in Azure. So not too shabby. All right, uh, so that was cool. But you, you started this right-click deployment from VS Code. <laughs> is that the way that I would have it set up normally at the end of the day? or uh, not is not if you're uh, a sane person working with other people. So uh, <laughs> at that point, you would probably do something like setting up webhooks or CI CD where you can run some proper integration tests, then build the artifact, push it to uh, the registry, which then automatically will do the deploy for you. Uh, you could do that as well. Uh, you can use DevOps projects and yep. VSTS. That'll do that. So that's yeah. awesome. All right. So let's switch back over to the slides. Now, we talked about. We got the demo. That's good. We talked about uh, microservices and serverless. I mean, I think of like serverless as micro, micro, micro services. <laughs> and they're cooler than just microservices, right? What do you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I'm a big fan of the event-driven model, right? And that's, that's kind of the evolution. So we go from, from infrastructure to individual containers to individual chunks of functionality. I'm a big fan. All right, so why don't you show us? Yeah, I think that's why we're here. All right, 
Uh, so back to my app. Uh, if you're not super familiar with serverless or Azure Functions, that's A-OK. -okay. That's what the extension is going to help you get up and running with. So the same way that we targeted the, uh, the user that isn't necessarily used to these kind of technologies, we did that. We brought that over to Functions as well. So to get started, this little folder here will initialize a new app for you. Uh, we're going to do something exciting here. We'll just start from scratch. What could go wrong? I will choose JavaScript because we're talking about event-driven programming. But you can do C Sharp, Java, uh, any language that you can use on Azure Functions, you can actually get to work exactly like how I'm going to show you. You may just have to get creative. OK, so what do we have here now? We've scaffolded out what? So this is just an empty Functions app. Uh, the super important part, so this local settings file is what's going to help you define your environment variables that you would have out on Azure, but locally, so you can connect to your Azure resources if you get to that point. Uh, the host file is empty. We don't have any need for that right now. But the really important part is what's set up here. So the, um, the Azure Functions tools, there's an Azure Functions CLI, which if you don't have it, the extension will help you. It'll walk you through the process. You can either brew install it or npm install it if you're on Windows. Uh, that will, the extension will, will actually do the command for you and get all these pieces working. But once you're ready to debug something locally, this task, task configuration here is what configures that host and starts it up. The magic is right there. And then the, uh, the launch.json knows how to attach to that debugger. It's just a OK, like so when it scaffolds, uh, scaffolds out the app, it scaffolds it out in such a way it's going to work with VS Code. Okay. Correct. Correct. So now we're, we have a really great starting point. We're going to create a function. And we'll start rather simple with an HTTP trigger. So uh, any sort of get or post request will be an event to this particular trigger. Uh, we'll choose anonymous auth because it demos. And here we go. Really simpy, simple code. It uh, looks for a query of name and then returns a hello and name. Otherwise, it gives you an error. We'll set a breakpoint here. And we will start debugging. So what's going to happen now? So this is the, uh, the function's host spinning up. Uh, it's reading in the files that host and the local settings files and getting everything set up for this. It recognized that there was an HTTP trigger in there. And here's our local URL. We'll go ahead and access it by hit control. And there we go. So there's our breakpoint. Uh, so this is the same experience that you would expect in VS Code when you're debugging a Node app. So all of the usual pieces are here. Uh, we can step through. Again, we didn't pass the query parameter, so we get back this error. And there we go. So, so if you go back over the browser and put in the query parameter, it'll work? Yeah, man. So here's our query. Uh-oh. Maybe. Oh, I think you wanted. <laughs> it's not. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Demos make me nervous. All right, so now we have a query parameter right. of name, value of Matt. Much better that time. Thank you. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. HTTP is a little uh, easy. <laughs> Yeah, can, you're right. Can so you, you take it up a notch? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so like I said, this kind of leads into the event-driven programming model. So it's more, uh, it's not just about HTTP requests or anything like that. You can actually do the bindings that, that are really powerful in uh, Azure Functions. So uh, for example, you can do a blob trigger, which is a storage account. So you can bind to changes in a blob storage account. Uh, there are a couple of prompts here. So I already have a storage account set up. We just need to. So this is the storage account that the trigger is going to be triggered off of. That's correct. OK. Uh, I can reuse it. I'm using it for, for both of my options here. If you're familiar with Azure Functions, uh, you, just, you need a storage account to actually get the triggers to work. So even if you're doing like a Cosmos DB trigger, you'll need a storage account to set these things up. Uh, this is the name of the blob container that I'm going to look for. And here is our our scaffold code here. Uh, let's go ahead and debug it. All right, so it's the same model. You're going to press F5. It's going to run the, the function host locally on the machine. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so this one is a little bit different, because 
we're not going to access anything in the browser. So what we're doing here is we're actually looking for changes to a file living out on Azure Storage. So instead, we're going to open up our handy dandy storage extension. We are going to expand my subscription. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to find the test blob container. And there is a file in here. So this is, again, editing files directly in Azure Storage. And you'll notice that when I change this and hit Control S, you can't see, but I'm totally hitting Control S. Uh, it is just updating it on Azure Storage. So theoretically, oh, I didn't leave my file open. That's not there. It is. Boom. <laughs> All right. So you edited, you actually used the storage explorer locally, and you edited the content of the blob storage in the cloud. Correct. And then the function broke locally. Correct. All right. That's we went cool. to space and back. Space Everything and back. is there. Nice. All right. So what if you wanted to deploy this? Uh, I'm glad you asked. It's almost like we had a script. Uh, the blue up arrow in all of the extensions is the deploy. All right. So from there, you can choose your workspace that you want to deploy, your subscription, and you can walk through the same steps as you did with the Docker extension to create a new function app. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's call it build. Oh, no. I must have done that already. Uh, let's go crazy and just do new for everything. It's our storage account. And we go, the same rules apply. It's going to go provision all of these pieces up in Azure. And once this is done, it's going to just zip this thing up. It's going to post over to the API, get all these files on Azure in the correct format. And one extra little trick that I don't think we actually talked about while we were building this script, but it is worth noting. Because I configured my local settings to point to this particular um, storage account, I can take those settings. I'm not sure if it'll work while it's deploying, but let's try it. And I can upload those local settings directly to Azure. OK. There we go. And there we go. So there's my web job setting with the correct endpoint. If you see the BA99 at the Nobody end Nobody can there. see you pointing, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> OK, so there, there's the deployment. All right. So that'll take one more second. <laughs> and while that's doing that, we can switch back over to the slides. I swear it'll work. And then since we are almost out of time, there's your Azure Functions demo. Just sort of wrap up for everybody how you can get started. Open up Visual Studio Code. Go to the extensions view. Let's search for Azure. Sign up for an Azure account. If you don't have an Azure account, get one. It's like $200 in free credits. If you have an MSDN subscription and you haven't activated your Azure credits yet, do that. It's like you're throwing away money if you haven't done that yet. Um, there's a great set of tutorials, deployment tutorials at aka.ms WAC VS Code deploy that will take you through deploying an Azure app service or a Docker container, a static uh, website. And what's cool about these tutorials are kind of step by step, and there's a big button that says, I need help. And literally, if you click on that button, Matt will answer you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We get an email. <laughs> And then we answer them right away. And then just go out and deploy something that's awesome. Let us know about it. Tweet to us at, at, uh, at, at code. And uh, yeah, give it a whirl. Is it done yet? Should we switch back? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. done. Let's switch back to prove that we actually deployed this function to Azure. There it is. So there is the HTTP trigger. We should get the same results. We'll change this. Press this time. There Boom. we go. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. And one last slide, which is please do your session evaluations. It is important to us. helps us be better uh, at what we're doing. And we'll be over here if you want to ask us any questions. And at the booth. So thanks. <laughs>